We know who was negotiating this deal, and two sides were uh, so on the one side was Egypt and Qatar, and on the other side was America and ostensibly Israel. And I was on this exact show where Dan was asking me, shouldn't Hamas take this deal? And I said, yes, Hamas should take the deal. Good news, they did. Now Israel, after their bluff is called, is going, well, all Wait of a minute. sudden, Check, we don't I have like to the challenge deal you. How do you Israel know that was the first proposed? deal? How do you know that was the first deal? Because the reason I say that is, and I want to put this up here, the State Department held a press conference today. They convened that a recent ceasefire deal was offered by Israel, which included hostages. Let's play this. This is number two, and then we'll get back to it. There has been a significant offer on the table. The ball has been in Hamas's court. We have made clear that they should accept that offer, that Israel made significant compromises, showed that they wanted to reach an agreement that would lead to the release of hostages, that would bring an immediate ceasefire, and we have hoped that Hamas would take the deal that was on the table. This, this doesn't appear to be the same deal, because it seems to me that if Israel's not no, accepting it, it's about deal. hostages. No. I'll tell you exactly what uh, the difference is between this and that. And it's actually a great compromise. So uh, everyone r roughly agrees to stage one where uh, we get 33 hostages back. That's great news. We want that. Hamas gets some uh, prisoners back that, that Israel has uh, taken, and they get a cessation of uh, hostilities for uh, about three weeks at a minimum, maybe stretching into four and five weeks. That's terrific. Everybody agrees so far. The problem was in stage two, where Hamas wanted uh, the entire conflict to be over. I think that's an understandable position. Otherwise, Israel, after the ceasefire, goes back to shelling Rafa and destroying Gaza, whatever is left of Gaza. On the other hand, Israel said, no, it has to be only 40 days and then we want to go back and be able to bomb the hell out of Rafa anyway, right? So, okay, we can disagree about which one is right or not. The way they got past it this time around is Hamas blinked, and they saw that uh, the bombing of Rafa has already begun, so they said, all right, we'll compromise on what, something we call a sustained calm in stage two, which is basically saying, America and Israel, you guys win, because sustained calm is not defined. So it doesn't necessarily mean a permanent ceasefire. Israel can go back to bombing Rafah after about 33 to 40 days. So that's a win for Israel. The reason Israel's not taking the offer that they wanted in the first place is because they were bluffing. They didn't want it. They just wanted that, to bomb that, the hell out look, of Rafah. Look, Israel, they, Israel has international pressure. It has the U.S. on its Hamas back right now to accept the deal. I mean, I, it's pretty clear. To but do the problem what? is, and, and I would have, uh, look, Cenk, I would tell you last week, I said I was critical of Netanyahu. Yahoo, as we're talking about negotiations to say, we're going into Rafa with or without a deal. And then rockets are fired there from there. And then we know that it was what, last week that there was this pier that was being built off of the coast of Gaza by the United States, had the cooperation of Israel. Its whole effort was to supply humanitarian aid to Palestinian civilians. It was bombed by Hamas. We can't act like Hamas is looking in the best interest of its civilians when they are still an ongoing threat. And yeah, again, I think it's premature that. to say that Israel's its fault for not accepting this deal. No, listen. The, don't conflate two things. Uh, so, number one, nobody in their right mind is saying Hamas has everybody's best interests in mind, let alone the Palestinian civilians, etc. So, is Hamas firing towards a port of entry is nuts. They never should have done that. That's obvious. But I condemn Hamas all the time uh, for killing civilians, for being counterproductive to the peace process, etc. But we have to be even-handed. So, you say, oh, uh, Israel has a right to defend itself. And hence, they've killed at least 34,500 people already, 10,000 probably more in the rubble, 77,000 injured, 25,000 women and children slaughtered, because Israel has a right to defend itself. And then you say Hamas firing a rocket inside Gaza, think, where Israel is Who do you Israel think makes more of an effort to try to protect well, civilian on, life? I mean, Israel, but Israel, but Israel on, and Rafa, Israel and Rafa I literally announced, announced that they were doing this. Does Hamas do that? Announce? Evacuate? Yeah. So, brother, th this is why I get animated on shows, because you guys, the pro-Israel side, always talks over us. It's just so infuriating. I, so I'm giving you a lot of time. Of, I'm not talking over I'm trying to question. correct the record. I'm trying to no, give you okay, a counterpoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, listen, brother. So, you're saying the Hamas or any Palestinian has no right to defend itself from Gaza itself, even though Israel has a right to kill 35,000? 
thousand people in his so-called self-defense. So you're being wildly no, 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 no. hypocritical. The, the, the loss you're saying of life one side is, is allowed the to loss slaughter, of life, slaughter, the slaughter, loss of slaughter, life slaughter, is, slaughter. The, the other loss of life is tragic. Rocket. The loss of life is horrific. I can oh, criticize yeah, Israel. For, I can yeah, criti yeah, yeah. I can criticize Israel. You don't know me, so you're, you're making assumptions. We could have a real debate on another time. I wanted no, to ask I'm you about the protest. On the I mean, nonsense I, I could ask you about the protest because the one thing we don't hear from protests, and now they're canceling classes and they're canceling graduations, is how come you don't see more emphasis on if we want free Palestine, why is there not a more emphasis on stopping Hamas? I just don't get it. Explain it to me real quick. Okay, again, you're being out. Listen, so easy to condemn Hamas, easy to say that October 7th was terrible. The reason it's easy because it, it was terrible. But when you then say, okay, we have a right to defend ourselves, and now Israel has killed at least 30 times the number of civilians that Hamas has. So then you say, well, nope, it doesn't matter what Israel does. Israel never can kill 30 that. times, 50 I never times, said 200 that, times. Look, look I never said it Hamas doesn't matter what Israel it. says. And so look, that's absurd. I wish we, so uh, I'm uh, telling you why. Can I just answer the you question? Got 30 I'm telling seconds, you why we got, we do people to, yeah. are focusing on the reason. Okay, the reason people are focusing on Israel is because Israel is the one doing the bombing. Israel is the one that slaughtered 25,000 women and children. So when you on October 8th, we all focused on Hamas and how terrible Hamas was. Right now, right. 30 times the number of civilians killed by Israel. So we focus on Look, Israel to I, get I, to I, peace. I think we can it's both very agree simple. a ceasefire would be great. And Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.